Hi everyone, my name is Mickey Hudson and today we are doing a MySoNet embroidery software. Uh, we are going to be importing fonts from embroidery today. So um, I do apologize for being just a wee bit late. We had a little technical difficulty, but we're on track with no problems now. Um, so like usual, I'm going to let you guys get in and get settled. Um, and just a reminder, do not click on anything that asks for personal information because it is not from us. We do not charge for these. Uh, these are free to you. Um, but today we are going to be using the MySonet embroidery software and importing fonts from embroidery. Uh, what that means is we can bring in outside fonts that we have may have purchased or downloaded or anything like that and install them, import them, and then we can treat them like any other font. They become typable. It's awesome. So we're going to just go ahead and delve and dive right in. So once again, my name is Mickey Hudson, and here we go. So I am going to go ahead and my software is already open, but you're going to go ahead and just open your software. And we are going to head over to our lettering tab. And in our lettering tab, we have the font manager. Now, for those of you that are on uh, the Mac, I'll give that a minute to wake up. For those of you that are on the Mac, it's going to be up in this in this portion right here. So we do not have the little tabs; we have the icons. So we'll find it in the letter, and you'll find it over here under Tools. So the window side has the tabs, and the Mac side has the icons. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our font manager. And when we open up our font manager, we can actually see our fonts here. This is another thing that's super nice that a lot of people may not even be aware of. But if you know of a specific font that you want to look for, you can just type it in here and it will bring it up for you. So we can just go ahead and now use this font and it'll already be here for us. We can also search for size. So if I say I want to look for a 20 millimeter font, you can actually type in the size here. It is going to look with positive or negative five millimeters. So if I type in 15 millimeters here, it's going to look for 10 to 20, the size 10 to 20, okay? One thing I want to do about this is I want to go into my fonts. My fonts. So let's just clear that. There we go. So there's all the categories, but we want to make sure that we are in my fonts when we do this because what will happen is if you try to open this or edit this it will not let you so it's going to protect the built-in uh, fonts that are built into the software so don't be afraid of getting in here and trying things because you're not going to be able to hurt anything that you you're not allowed to but if we come down here to my fonts this is where you can see fonts that have been uh, added I'm going to go ahead and delete this just because that's what I'm going to do. Um, so if you were in the uh, MySonet quick font, here's some of the quick font designs that are quick font, quick font fonts I added during that time. And that's where you're seeing here. But now I want to add some embroideries. And what I mean by embroideries is if you... If you have downloaded fonts that you you like or that you have purchased, they're going to come like this. So what happens when I when you purchase designs or download designs in this format? If I want to bring in a design, I need to go and insert one at a time. So I would have to insert one and insert two 
and insert three. And then I would have to position these out. Oh, this is where the film strip comes in handy. So I would have to position these out and line them up and all of that kind of stuff. So what import fonts from embroidery does is it kind of bypasses that. It is so cool. You're going to love it. So in my film strip, I'm going to hold my shift key and select them all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete. I could also go to my home. I could have selected all and I could have deleted from there. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to my letter, I'm going to go to font manager, and I'm going to come over here under the tools. And I'm going to import font from embroideries. So when I click that open, the first thing that it's going to ask for is a name. It wants you to name this font. If you've purchased or downloaded the font, you probably already know the name for it, or you can create your own. I'm going to call this after hours and one inch because I have a variety of sizes. So when I do this, it's going to say, where do you want to go? Where are you going to, you're going to go find your fonts. For this exercise, I've put them on my desktop so I could find them easy for you. And I'm going to come over here to after hours and one inch. And the first thing it's going to ask for is the letter A. I'm going to cancel this so you can see. But the first letter it's going to ask for is the letter A. So I'm going to come back over here. And now that I'm reminded. And this is one of those things, once you've done it a couple of times, you totally get it. So you won't need to be reminded. But it is kind of nice that you can cancel out and just start over at any time. So now I want to talk about what's happening here is it's selecting a size for us. Now, this is not one of the built-in fonts in the, the manner of, it's not as editable as it, they are when they're the built-in fonts. So because we've purchased these or we've downloaded these or we've even created these, um, they're set as stitches. So it's going to set that stitch size. Um, and that's really, I mean, we can do the 20% uh, size up or down, but we're really kind of limited to the size. That's why I've labeled it after hours one inch, because that is, that's the size. Here is where under the character set, you can select um, the extended, the super extended. Uh, those are going to be the most two that you use, the two use you use the most. I will talk about these in just a bit, but extended is kind of your capitals and your lower cases, and the super extended is kind of the the symbols like the number sign, the at sign, the question marks, etc. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select the super extended. And the next thing that you're going to see here is the baseline. So the baseline is setting, it's where the, the bottom of the, the stitches are going to set. So you'll see what I mean with the baseline as we go on. But that is where the base is going to set. And so I'm going to go ahead and select B. And I'm going to open. Now what happens when I select the next uh, letter is I get a line at the bottom, which is our baseline. And then I get a dash line at the top. This dash line is the height of the letter A when it gets in. So whatever letter you put in, which is usually your letter A, it's letting me know this is the top and this is the bottom. Does everybody kind of get that? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to close this. I know it's scary. But one of the things is with the, um, the new software, so Premiere Plus 2 will do this, and the new MySonet will do this. Um, where's my fonts? There we go. It'll allow us to edit afterwards. 
So now if I come in here and type in A and B, you'll see how it's it types it in like a like any other font. Does everybody get that so far? Are there any questions about that so far? So I've just selected it, right click and delete. Can't, that's an interesting question. Um, the question is, can you create a new folder within the fonts category? I don't think so. But I will look into that because that is interesting. But I don't think so because none of these have a, a new a new folder. They're all just kind of listed down. So none of these have an extra folder. But I'll look into that. That's a good question. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to minimize this. All right. So one thing that I want to talk to you about as well, but usually the first thing that I do is when I look at my fonts is I'm going to look at my fonts. So like if you look here at the five, for instance, there's that extra little stitch going on there. And there's a couple of them where you see these extra little stitches. So it's not a requirement to do this, but it is something that if you take care of this first, it will clean up your fonts um, for you. So what I'll usually do is I'll just come in and double click on the font that in question and wait for my software to catch up. Remember, you don't want to double click too much and get all click happy because you'll end up with a whole bunch of them. But do you see here where the the nodes on the 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 boxes around it are white? When you see white, that is fixed as stitches and they're not editable. So when you see the green, those can still be edited. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the modify tab. Now for this one, you will need the, um, let me zoom back out. You will need to have um, extra the gold level or the platinum level, the gold level and the plat or the platinum level in the MySonet embroidery, and then the extra or the ultra in uh, the Premier Plus 2. So what I'm going to come down here is I'm going to select the stitches. Oh, I'm just going to grab this guy. And I'm just going to move him on in there and scooch him on in. Okay. So if you don't have the modify tab, it's not the end of the world when you finish it. So I don't want you guys to worry about that. But if you do have the modify tab, and why I am a big um, supporter of the modify and the stitch editor, is we can clean up our designs and change our designs beforehand. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and close that. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. I saved it, but I didn't pay attention to where I saved it to. So, but I'm going to go ahead and show you that it, it doesn't really matter if you don't do it first. Um, but it is nice if you go ahead and do it. So I've gone ahead and I've clicked my font manager open again. Now, remember I said that we could come back and edit this. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in instead of clicking on import font from embroideries. I'm just going to edit my font. I want to make sure that I have the, the font that I want to edit highlighted, and I'll select Edit. Now I'm going to show you something cool here. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize. Whoops, I want to make this smaller. Hold on, let me do this first. Close. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and, no, I don't want to make you bigger. Okay. So I want to be over here and I'm going to select my fonts and I've got after hours and I've got lunch and I'm going to minimize this because this is cool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep this on over here and I'm going to bring this over here 
and everything has shrunk. So I'm going to, it's still there. I just have to, you're no longer seeing it until I open it. But what will happen is now if I edit, I can come here and I can just drag and drop. And then I can drag and drop. And I can drag and drop. How cool is this? So I'm going to get to one of these. I want to get to the G because the G is one of these. So for this one, you may want to decide, do you want the G to sit on top or do you want the G to have that little extender? Now, back in the old days, we used to have to actually manually type this in, but now I can just click and set that down. So now that is going to be there. And then we're going to do the H, I, J. Now I'm going to leave the J the way he is. And yes, I talk to myself the whole way. So the nice thing is you can play with this all you want. I'm going to leave this one. Normally I would move that down, but I want to show you guys something. So I'm just going to go through the rest of the uppercase. But yeah, back in the, the old days, <laughs> say, oh, we fixed this. I do not know why this is doing this again. I apologize. So I guess I'll get my husband back on it. So back in the old days, we had to, once we started, we had to finish. And this one I'm also going to leave a little not exactly where I want it. But back in the old days, once we started, we had to finish. But now I can come and I can close it. I can test it. I can do all of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because these are uppercase only, I'm going to do the uppercase C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And this will probably be a little big. Then I'm going to come on over here and apply. Maybe a little bigger. My mouse is so sensitive. So I'll go ahead and click apply. And here I can um, see what it looks like. So one thing that I did not do that I would like to do is I'm going to I want to, on the shape, I want to put it to a straight line because I want to test it. But because I didn't do that, that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I apologize for this. I, I thought this is something we figured out, but apparently not. But I'm going to right click. I can come up to edit lettering. And I'm just going to change the shape to fit to a straight line. So I can do that even though it's, I've done it. You can partially add fonts to Premiere Plus 2 as well. Yes, yes you can. So I'm just going to kind of come and bring this straight down. And I can take a look and see where I don't like what, what is happening. So see how that J is up high? I want to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my font manager and I'm going to edit and I'm going to click on that J and I can move my baseline and I can close and I can close and it Look at that. It'll even straighten it out if I'm in the middle of typing things out. 
How cool is that? So you can actually see your corrections right on the screen. So like this guy, my G, I actually think I want to move him up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to my tools. So just to keep in mind too, I'm running two computers on this. So I'm going to actually move him up so that he lines up more with the top here. There we go. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. And then it'll take a little second. Oh, there it goes. But see, I think I like this a little better where this G is sitting lined up with the top. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. So do you guys see what I did there where I moved this so that it would line more with the top instead of the bottom of the G sitting out on the baseline? But that's what the baseline and that top line do for you. Okay, you guys get that? Is that yay? Woohoo! So I right click and I'm going to delete and I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to come in and I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the, 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 the collection I want to change and I'm going to edit. I apologize. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to start moving my A. And again, I'm going to have the same issue with some of my lowercase. Oops. So here's it's one of the C's that I cleaned up beforehand. There's E. E. Now the F is one of those. Let me make sure I can see that. So the F is one of those that I'm going to want to move this baseline because I want the F but remember if I if I'm not happy with it I'm not stuck with that so I can always go that's where I think it's going to be but when I do my test my test letters I can adjust it and it's going to fix it immediately so it's really really cool and then the same with the G That's going to, I'm just going to very quickly set that on down. But as you can see, yeah, it's, it goes black for me too. So, um, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. So now the I and the J is also going to be interesting because the I is going to sit on the bottom. But the jig is going to end up sitting slightly down. So here I'm going to take a look at where my eye is. And I'm looking for that top dot and just kind of going to eyeball where that J is as well. And again, I can clean it up when I do the test, the, the, the type out. Okay. And I'm going to do that again because I want to make sure you guys understand what I'm doing when I do that. I know. Now, for some reason, I am running two computers on my, my one computer. I've got Windows and Mac both running on my computer. And I think that is why my little icons are not all showing. So P, I'm going to adjust. If you are in the position where all of your icons are not showing, all you see is, is these little guys, then you want to make sure that you go and download the Explorer plugin. That's why you're only seeing these. Mine, I have the Explorer plugin, but I think I've got so much running. Um, that it's a little confused. So I'm going to go S. G. 
That's my guess anyway. How many fonts can you put in? That's a good question. I think as many as you you can add. I've never really um, seen a limit to it. It's kind of like as much as your computer space will hold. So Y is another one that's going to need a little tension. But again, if I don't get it, I'm going to leave it up so that we can see the mistake. So you can see again how to correct it. So Z. So now we're going to, um, there's the question marks, there's the dollar signs, there's all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to put those in just yet. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and close. And I'm going to go ahead and close. So now if I come in and let's do P, Q, I want to do lowercase. So P, Q, R, F, D, U, V. And I want to make sure that on shape that I put, put uh, to a straight, fit to a straight line. And then I'm going to apply. I'm just going to straighten this line out. But here's where I can see if things are going to sit the way I want them to. And as you can see this Y, I'm not happy with how that Y is sitting. So I'm going to just come back into my tools in my font manager. I'm going to edit the imported fonts. I'm going to come down to my Y and just move the baseline. And again, it'll correct it right on the fly. Now, if you want to have more control, you can come down here to the baseline and plus or minus, and it'll move up plus or minus like that way as well. And I'm going to close. And once again, it's going to make that correction automatically. <laughs> cool. All right, is there any other questions about that so far? So when it comes to um, adding exclamation points, so again, make sure I'm selected to the one I want to edit. And I'm going to So there's a pound, there's a plus, there's a question, there's a slash, a period, a percent. I am looking for dollar. So I'm going to go ahead and take the da the the comma. I'm going to go ahead and, and do the comma. Um, so when we do this, it, if you look here, there is arrows here to the previous page. When I come down here, there is no comma. But I want to add a comma. This is part of the super extended. So these are the, the icons and stuff that you can add with the super extended. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say I want to do a comma. And there's my comma. Now in this one, I want my comma to sit more like a comma. If I had quotation marks, my quotation marks, I may want to move more up towards the top. Everybody kind of getting that? And we'll close. We'll close. And I'm going to just go ahead and right click because I want to add something. So I'm going to right click on my lettering, edit lettering, and I'm just going to put a comma at the end and tell it OK. And there it's added the comma. So I can make sure that that is correct too. So 
So now I'm going to select it and right click. And I'm going to delete. And I'm going to, it's called after hours. So now I can just type it in and apply. After hours. Now, one thing about this guy, I'm going to show you here, is with this guy, he actually is like handwriting, like cursive writing. So these I want to connect. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the shape. I'm just going to go ahead and horizontal. And here is my gap. So I can actually play with my gap. And apply and this is where the editing comes in so great where you can right click and edit lettering I'm going to change my gap it's not so I want to make it not so gappy so let's do 10 and that's looking a little better so let me zoom in here but isn't that cool are there any questions to that? Really is a quite a simple program. It's just one of those you just got to get in there and play with it. So letter tab, the tools, we're going to go to font manager. And so now I want to add a new font. So I will select the import font from embroideries and this will create a new category so if I click on this here's my new category so fairy tale and I'll tell it okay can you adjust the gap for individual letters I'm gonna oops cancel So can you in, uh, change the gap for individual letters? So no, it's going to change the gap for everything that we've put in into our letters here. So is that a letter edit for the, no. So this is the way it types out. This lower one, that is the way it typed out. But this one is the one where I changed the gap here. But it's not a permanent gap. If I type it in again and apply, it's going to put the last, whatever last I had in there. So let me change that to zero. Get rid of this guy. It's still doing it at negative. But see, that's the default. Let's go in to here. And I'm going to edit. So you see here, there is, there's no way here to change the spacing for the stitch out. And this is why they've given us this option here to change the gap. Because I personally, I mean, this looks fine, but I personally wanted it to look like it's cursive, so like it's typing cursive. So one is where I have, I'm right clicking and deleting. One is, this is where I've created a, a font. So there's a new font in here. So if I come in here to my fonts, there is that new font in here. So I've created a font from my embroideries. So this can be done with letters and it can also be done with designs if you wanted to. Um, but it's mostly used for letters. It's hard to keep track of the, the design. 
Okay. But this is where we're going to flip through the different extended characters is this little guy here, right? And once a character is done, you can see that they're blue and the ones that still need to be done are white. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say, let's do the zero and one and two. I'm just not going to do them all. But I do want to talk about the the extra, these little guys here, all right? So um, there's a link that I think my behind the scenes crew, Thomas, Meredith, and Ryan, yay guys, um, are will put in for you. But I also want to show you how to find the help you as well. So at any point, if you're in trouble or you have questions about something, if you hit the help button over here, and you come over here to the about my sonet it will actually no nope, that's the the about my sonet but this will actually take you to the website the the it's like a, the owner's manual and so what i do here is i just go eh, i just want to do about fonts so importing fonts And you can then go directly to that information. So it's just step by step. But one of the things here is if you go to the select font, this is where it talks about the different character settings. So again, I'm not going to go into all of them. You can go ahead and take a look. But there are different characters for these different groupings and stuff like that. So it's pretty interesting. And the character maps can be found, you can find character maps for your computer. So a character map will um, allow you to do other characters other than what your keyboard allows you to do. So they can be downloaded from, um, like on the Mac side, it can be downloaded from the App Store. Um, I'm not sure the equivalent of Windows, but there are character maps that you can download for Windows. Most of them are free, um, and those that are charged, it's very little, but most a lot of them are free. Uh, so it's really kind of cool that you can get different characters and stuff like that. So, okay. Are there any other questions about this? So this was in the help. This was in the help. So let's add a different one. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to go ahead and create a new font from embroidery. And I'm going to call this one fairy tale. And I'm going to go back to my desktop and my fonts. And I'm going to change my view. There we go. So once again, I'm going to select the first one and then I open and this is going to set me up. And here I have a decision to make. I'm going to go ahead and, and just bump it here and let this fall down a little bit and see what happens. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find my fairy tale and I'm just going to do the click and drag part here. I'm going to come to B and see what B does. So once again, I'm going to move that and C and D. And I'm going to scroll down and do A, B, C, D with the lowercase. Um, the lowercase, there's capital. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I'm going to close that. 
So now once again, in my fonts, there's my fairy tale. So I can do ABC, ABC. Oh, what did I do? A, B, C, D. Nope, nope, I don't want you. And A, B, C, D. And we'll apply. And what did I forget to do here? I forgot to put it on a straight line. So I'm going to go right click, edit lettering, and I'm going to change my shape to fit to a straight line. And this just helps me. This is not a requirement, but it is really highly recommended uh, because you get to see how things are, how all your letters are kind of sitting on the line. And if you're happy with it, that's great. Um, and so what I'm going to do is A, B, C, D. Let's see how it looks as a sentence. So I think I like the capital letter to hang down below. You may choose something different, but this is how easy it is to move these things around. Is everybody kind of getting that? Are there any questions to that? Okay, you guys are making this way too easy. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to finish. So I'm selected on fairy tale. I'm going to edit import font. I'm going to come over here and I want, you know, I want to do E. Do you see how easy it is to just play with it and go, okay, I've done enough for today. I'm going to come back later. And there's G. You guys have to have some questions. Oh, I will show you this. So I'm going to put this here. So I've got K here. And then I'm going to do L, M, N. And I put N on top of N. So now this is now in the wrong spot. What do I do? It is so hard, let me tell you. So we're going to take this M and we're going to drop it right on the M and it's fixed. So it's really easy. Don't worry if you mess up. If you do something where you look back later and see where you've, you've messed something up, like I put in the wrong letter here, here. So there's a couple of things I can either click and drag, but let's say I had this closed. I can actually load. I want to overwrite this character. So then I can come and just open the file and overwrite that character. So at any time, if you were working on it, what I mean here, it's if any time you're working on it here and you've realized, ooh, I've got this letter that's that's the wrong letter. You can go right back in to your tools and edit it and fix it that fast. So it's really, really easy to maneuver and, and move, maneuver around. So, whoops, once this is done, another thing that I like to do is once I've got this, this going on, and I'm going to edit this so I can bring my gap. Did we say it was, I'm going to go ahead and negative nine and bring this together. What I like to do is come over and do a life view of it. 
So the life view and the design player are also your friends. So if I do the life view, I can kind of see what everything's going to stitch like. I can zoom in and see. So I can get an idea if it's going to stitch out the way that I expect it to. Okay. I also like to do the design player. So that's a good question is the web dings. So the previous Facebook Live I did was on quick fonts. And web dings are really great for quick fonts. So I would hop over to that video. Uh, but web dings do make cool designs. But I will show you how to add um, designs to, to your font collection as well. But I do like to take a look at... Um, do like to do this. A uh, question on the calligraphy font. How can I remove the end of a letter? What, do you mean like, like this part of the end of a letter? So is it like you want to move remove this little bit here of the S? So let me know if that's what you're looking to do. I'll show you how uh, to do that. Um, I do think that if you put the letters in individual, which is under reverse, you can move the letters one at a time. Which is under reverse. Well, it's still typing them in. Is that what you mean? Okay, so yes to the, the calligraphy question. But um, the thing is, if you still want to be able to put in your designs individually, you still have your font collection. So this is still, I can still pull them in one at a time and do, do those if that is really what you want. But the import font from embroidery really is about turning your embroidery collections, your font embroidery collections into typable fonts. So there is going to be uh, times for each. So um, nobody, don't get rid of your font collections just because now you've put them in because there are times where you'll just want to put a letter here or there um, and you may find it easier to use your collection instead of, the font menu. So let me come over here. So to, to it, and am I answering that question with the individual letters? Um, because I'm not sure I understand the question. So I don't know if I'm giving you the answer that is correct. So I just need to un understand that question a little bit better. Um, so to, to clear up the, let me zoom in here. So I want to get rid of this, this little tail. So this is where uh, Modify and Stitch Editor will come into hand. So I'm going to go ahead and right click to fix it as stitches. And then I can come over to Modify. Zoom out and zoom in to what I'm looking at. So I can modify and in the modify tab, I have this little slider so I can draw the stitches. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it out to where all I'm see kind of seeing is this, that little tail. So I'm going to come from the other side and I just want to get rid of that little tail. So this is the modify tab. You actually have more control in modify. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to come to home and I'm going to edit the design. And when I edit the design, it's going to open in Stitch Editor. And I'll show you the difference between the two. So you saw me trying to, to use the slider to get in on this little spot here. Stitch Editor here has the slider, but it also has the, the precise control here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back to where I get to the little S here. And because this little S has its, the stitch kind of stitches this way and then this way, which is why you're seeing that. So I'm going to change my view and I just want to see, I'm going to change my view and I just want to see the 2D so that I can see individual. So I'm going to come back from the end here. And once I get kind of in here, but see how much more control I have here? But then I have even more control with the plus and negatives here. What I'll do is I'll just come in here and um, select this little bit here and I'm just going to click around it and then delete that. And I'm going to delete that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and draw all stitches. And you'll see that that is now deleted. And what's so wonderful about the MySonet embroidery is, did you see how quickly I opened up Stitch Editor? And how now it's already done in it's already done here. So all I have to do is go to home, select what I want to edit, and it'll automatically open up Stitch Editor. And then when I close Stitch Editor, the changes that I've done have already been made on my embroidery. So, but that is how you can do you can do that to end to end the the last letter to get rid of it. So you can do it in modify. I mean, I could have done it in modify but it does require a little more patience because we do have the slider, but we don't have that precise control. So when I just want to do quick things like change a letter, you know, I have a flower and I want to move my flower from one side to another, modify is great for that because I can usually do that very quickly. But if you want to do precise um, editing, then Stitch Editor is awesome. there any other questions? So did we get that uh, put in the letter individual, which is under reverse? Can you move the letters one at a time? Did I get a, a follow-up to that? Um, did I answer it quite correctly or to your satisfaction? Or am I missing something? And I can always come back in the comments as well um, because we still we still have about five minutes. So if there is anything else that you guys want to see. Um, but as you see, it is a very, very simple program. It is very cool. Oh, I was going to show you how to add letters. So let's just say uh, our uh, designs. So let me, you can do the exact same thing. Um, I'm going to create a new and I'm just going to do my sample collections. Now what this I'm going to do is I'm going to really break the rules. Now normally when I do this, I would select some designs and make a folder full of designs that are all about similar sizes. But for what this I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open my Sonet, the samples, and so here's my stitches. So I'm just going to select this as my A. And this, whoops, cancel. This will be my B, and this will be my C. And I'm going to go ahead and close. So, yes, you can. Um, so, here you can see I did it with roses galore. So, I, I did all of the. Um, the letters are different roses, but here we'll do this. These, I only chose the capitals, so I will do A, B, C. And when I put those in, it's going to drop those three designs. So, yes, you can bring in 
designs and you can bring any embroidery. Um, so you're going to create a font from any embroidery. So um, yes, designs work as well. Fonts work the best, but designs definitely work as well. Uh, will this work with Premiere Plus 2 Ultra? Yes, it will. So it works exactly the same. Um, the, the modify tab and the stitch editor modify module will work a little differently. For that, you will have to uh, copy or save and open up stitch editor or modify and then import it that way. Um, whereas the MySonet, as soon as I go to edit, it automatically opens up uh, stitch editor uh, and then it makes the changes. So the features are there. They're just going to, how you're going to get them. You're going to do it the, the way you're used to on the Premiere Plus 2 and on the MySonet embroidery software. It's a little more automatic. Um, but yes, it'll do the same stuff. Okay. So anything else? I've still got about two minutes. Come on, guys. We can get some more questions. And as you can see, I've, I've moved on. I can answer a lot of different things. Um, all right. If there are no more questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this then. I hope this answered some of your questions and I hope some of you are going to get really excited and start playing with this because it is a wonderful feature of the software that we've, we have had for a while. Um, so it's just a wonderful feature. I will follow up with questions or uh, answering questions in the, the comments. And so if you, for those of you that may be watching later, don't be afraid to go ahead and ask questions um, because I do follow up. And if I don't, my behind the scenes crew does. So um, I just want to thank everybody for coming and tuning in. And uh, as always, if there's, if you see something that I could do better, please let me know. And I will talk to you all later. Thanks for coming. Bye. See you next time.